Welcome back. So in this video, we are going to learn an example for learning vector quantization. Okay. So we already have discussed the algorithm. Once you see how the algorithm works, like with an example, you will understand it better. So now in this example, I have taken five input training pair. So this is a set. Okay. My set consists of five input training pair. And this uh, learning vector quantization is a supervised training. So when it is supervised, for each and every training pair, we know target of it. So my input consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 pattern, okay, 4 input neuron and 2 clusters. So for the input first input neuron, this is the cluster that it belongs to. For the second, it is C1. So for each and every input pair, or input pattern that we present for this X1, X2, X4, we know which cluster it actually belongs to. Okay, then we with that we proceed on the training process. And the uh, first step here is the initialization. As I told you, for initialization, the algorithm works by taking some input pair assigning to the weight vector. So what we do, we just do, we just take two input paths here, one belonging to cluster one, another belonging to cluster two. Okay, so first input path I have taken it as one zero zero zero. So this belongs to the cluster one. So all the connections that belongs to cluster one takes this value. So one here, weight vector here one. 0, 0, 0 for the links. Okay, so all my uh, weights that are connected to the cluster 1 will be assigned with the weights that is taken from S1. And for cluster 2, S4, I take the weight vector as it is. So now all the links that are connecting to this cluster 2 will be assigned with the weight vectors as 0, 0, 0, 1. So 0, 0, 0, 1 for the connections. Okay, so this is one uh, sort of learning actually that is by attaching the weight as it is. Like remember your uh, pattern, pattern association network, what we do? We take the training pattern, assign it as a weight vector as it is, right? So the similar pattern is used for this learning vector quantization. So for each and every cluster, I take one sample uh, input uh, weight vector, input pattern and assign that as a weight vector. Now I, with this, I can come to the justification that uh, this 1 and 4 are already learned. So I am going to begin the process with all the remaining training parts of 2, 3 and 5. Okay, for the first iteration alone, I will leave those things that are already trained. I just take the remaining patterns alone. I will show you an example of only one. So first I start with the second part. Okay, so second part is S2. So I have to assign the value of x1 as 0, x2 as 1, x3 as 0 and x4 as 4, x4 as 0 and it actually belongs to this cluster 1. Okay, so what we do, we just calculate the distance between this input and the clusters for 1 and 2 and remember you have this learning rate that has to be initialized. So sometimes it will be given in the problem as it is or else you take a minimal value for the learning rate. Okay. Now what we do, we calculate the distance between the input paths. So input takes the value of 0 for x1, 1 for x2, 0 for x3 and 0 for x4. So we take this pattern, present it. Now what we do, we calculate the distance between this input vector to the cluster 1, this input vector to the cluster 2 and using this Euclidean distance function. So Euclidean distance formula is written here. So we take the value xi minus wig. Okay, so for the first cluster, xi is 1 for, it is 0 minus 1 the whole square, 1 minus 0 the whole square, 0 minus the vector value is 0 and 0 minus 0 the whole square. That is how it is calculated. Okay, so x1, w11, x2 minus w21, x3 minus 3, 1 and x4 minus weight vector of 4, 1 connection. Okay, see that is the formula whole square when I calculate the value of my cluster rate or the distance calculated is 2 and similarly I want to find the cluster distance for uh, C2, 2. So how you are going to do it using the formula of Euclidean distance x1 minus 1, 2, w1, 2. So x1 minus w1, 2 and x2 minus w2, 2, x2 minus w2, 2, x3 minus 3, 2, x4 minus w3, 4. Oh, sorry, 4, 2. Okay. So when you apply the value, the result is also 2. Okay. So what we do, we choose a meaning. Like after calculating the distance between the input pattern that is presented and that of the output that is calculated, we try to calculate, the, we try to take the unit that has a minimal distance. But the problem here is, for the example I have taken, 
you have 2 as the value. Okay, so the, when I present this input pattern, the distance is calculated as 2 for here and 2 for the cluster 2 2. Okay, so when this happens like this, what we do? We arbitrarily choose any one unit as the cluster unit. Since I want to show you the difference in the weight vector updation, what I do? I take this uh, winning unit as 2. Okay, so randomly we choose any one as a winning unit since the values are going to be the same. Now what I do, I know for the distance by applying the formula, it chooses J as the winning unit and that J is 2, second unit as the cluster unit. But the problem is, once after calculating the distance, choosing the winning unit, what we do, we already know which cluster the unit actually belongs to, right? So it is the supervised learning model and we exactly know to which cluster it belongs to. So for this S2, it belongs to cluster 1, but we have chosen this 2 as a winning unit. So the target is not matching with the winning unit. So what we do, we go for a weight updation. And here weight updation is, there is a slight change in the formula, right? So when the chosen target is equal to the winning unit, what we, uh, sorry, the target is equal to the winning unit, we just update with the positive weight or else we are, go ahead with the minus negative values. Since the target and the winning unit are not same, we take away the, we just throw, just give, uh, get a distance away from the cluster unit. So what we do, we use this formula of minus. Okay, a formula with negative value is taken over here. So the new weights are calculated like for the cluster 2, since this is chosen as the winning unit, and it is not same as that of the target that is needed. I am going to update all the weight vector for the links that are connected to the C2. Okay, what all the links that are connected to C2? 1, 2, W1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2 and 4, 2. So 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2 and 4, 2. We are going to update the weights. And how does the weight updation happen? Old weight minus the learning rate into xi like we use the formula like your uh, Euclidean distance function xi minus w12 old so for the first unit what happened w12 new equal to the old weight of 1 2 link is 0 so 0 minus our learning rate value is taken as 0 0.2 0 0.2 multiplied by x1 value the x1 value that is presented for the first unit is 0, right? 0 is the x1 value. 0 minus w12 is 0. Okay, so 0 minus 0 is 0. The entire result will become 0. So for the first w12, the updated weight will be 1, 2. Updated weight will be 0. That remains as it is. Now for the second link, w22, the initial, uh, the weight here is 0. So old weight is 0 minus New value is 0 0.2, x2 value is x2 value is 1. So 1 minus 0 will be 1, 0. Point minus, uh, so it will become minus 0 0.2. Okay, similarly we update the weight for 3, 2 and 4, 2. Okay, so this is just the first pattern that is presented. So I presented my first pattern as 2, found the winning, find the equal, uh, Euclidean distance and chosen 1. Uh, winning unit and it is, seems to be that the winning unit is not same as the target one so I updated my weight vector again next time I have to take the next input pattern as 3 I have to present the net with this weight calculate the Euclidean distance and check whether I am getting the same I am going to repeat it for all the input pattern with 2, 3 and 5 ok this is one single iteration I am going to present all the input update my weight ok so after updation, what I do, I repeat this process. I will go ahead with the second iteration. And remember for learning vector quantization, I am going ahead with the next iteration. I have to update my learning rate value. Okay, so learning rate value is updated like this, right? New into k and k takes the value from 0 to 1. One minimal value is taken. With that, we are going to update the learning rate value. And I am going to repeat this process for any number of iterations. So this is... When I just train the net with all the input pattern once, that will be one single iteration. And I have to do it multiple times until my net, net is actually able to categorize it clearly. For the entire sequence of the input pattern that I have present, that presented, if there is no change between this target and the winning unit, if it is properly classified, then I am going to stop the process and end it. 
or when I reach the number of iterations, maximum number of iterations, I'm going to stop the process. Okay, so this will be considered as the stopping criteria. I hope you understand the difference between your uh, um, self-organizing map and your learning vector quantization, right? Self-organizing map works like we choose the winning unit and we update the way not only for the winning unit, also for the nearby unit. It preserves topology. Whereas here, only those winning unit will be updated. Might be with the positive value or the negative value and that depends on the supervised pattern. When it is properly classified, we bring them closer, we update it, we will just put a lot more weight on to it. And when it is not properly classified, we use it with the negative value, we just try to drag them away. Okay, so this is how your learning vector quantization algorithm works. Okay, a complete supervised learning algorithm that follows pattern classification, a clustering procedure. Okay, thank you.